Welcome to the Old Republic Podcast. We are a podcast that discusses Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, general sci-fi, and about the stories that inspired a galaxy. Consider this a spoiler warning for everything under the sun and the twin suns in that galaxy far, far away. This is where the fun begins. Okay, so this book has a lot of titles. I'm just going to look at the the cover and just read everything on it. Repeating actions to achieve story goals. The story palette. Book four. The structure mm-hmm. of Star Wars, the original trilogy. A scene-by-scene approach by Daniel N. Blair. Confession time. Yes. Uh, I wasn't able to read this all the way through. Um, I read the introduction. Tried mm-hmm. to read you know like kind of the summary of the trilogy but it just didn't have that um you know touch that skywalker a family at war or you know different books we've kind of touched on had like talking about the the hero's journey or the writer's journey and Mm -hmm. like just the way this book is formatted it's like oh some things are bold some things are italicized and like I guess kind of like, um, you know, how like when you're talking about uh, the heresies of the prequel trilogy, like that author really dug the the kind of books and poems and themes that I was into. But this is kind of just like summarizing, you know, the uh, the story of Star Wars just... And, like, it, it was a weakness on my part. I wasn't able to finish it. So I think you were the true hero, and you were able to do something I wasn't able to do. Uh, that's right. Yeah, call me uh, Luke Skywalker here in this uh, scenario. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's very... <laughs> it's very rare that I finish a book uh, before you do, or at all instead of you. And, um, you know, we'd actually... We'd picked this book quite a while ago, um, because it looked like something a little bit different, um, you know, when we were going through our hero's journey analysis of the prequels and then the original trilogy, um, and one day the the sequel trilogy, we were kind of looking at some books that were a little bit more academically focused, and you know, we picked the heresies for the prequel trilogy. But you know, the original trilogy, it's been done and covered by like basically like every aspect of it. So we were yeah. looking for something that was a little bit different, you know, still still academic and still something we could kind of sink our teeth into. And that was why we picked this book here, The Story Palette, uh, The Structure of Star Wars uh, by Daniel M. Blair. Um, and I will say that it is a, a much more kind of academic look. It's more, um, to me, um, just generally, we'll talk a little bit more kind of about the specifics of the book here, but it seemed to me more of like a, almost like a writing aid for um you know people that are you know writing scripts and writing stories and things that seemed more of like a like a companion uh thing to help you with your own writing process more so than um an examination i guess of star wars um if that makes any sense um because i think the the strongest part of the book or the part that i found the most interesting was really kind of the first couple of chapters where uh blair was you know kind of you know, talking about the process and why he was structuring the book the way that he was structuring it more interesting than the actual like body of the book itself. Yeah. And I think another reason why we chose this book is like, I think like, because it was kind of more recent, like it came out like copyright 2022. uh, And like, I, even though I really enjoyed the prequels, a heresy book I was like maybe that was a little bit hard for for some of our listeners and you know uh, people out there so I was like let's just do a really chill kind of new different you know original trilogy book and so that's why we kind of did that way um and what's funny is it ended up being too difficult for me <laughs> it defeated me <laughs> that's right yeah and it's it's not a particularly long book it's um it's only it's just shy of 100 less pages than 100, i think yeah um but yeah it's it's really just kind of a, a book that's that's really laying out kind of this this process of creating the story palette and i like kind of at the beginning of the book um you know when daniel and blair is you know talking about the creation of 
you know, what he's doing here with the story palette. And he's talking that about how, you know, stories, you know, have a particular set of actions. I think the the scenario he gives is the story of Cinderella. Um, you know, the story of Cinderella, you know, you know, kind of depends on her going to, you know, the ball and losing her slipper. Um, and it's, you know, found by, um, you know, Prince Charming or whatever. Uh, but those, those particular actions um, aren't necessarily what makes Cinderella. What makes Cinderella are that she, you know, she goes somewhere and she loses something and it's found by someone. It's not necessarily, you know, this, this ball, it's not necessarily the glass slipper. So the Cinderella story could be told in many different ways. Um, as long as it has those key, you know, kind of ingredients, um, and then kind of went on to apply that to Star Wars. And I thought that that was kind of interesting. And then it kind of broke it down um, a little bit further um, and saying, you know, that the Star Wars, you know, which came out in um, 1977, was, you know, a movie that had a bunch of aliens in it, just like the movie Alien. But, you know, they're very different movies, even though mm -hmm. they were both kind of movies about aliens. And I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting to think about, you know, that, you know, a lot of these stories and a lot of these uh, films and TV shows do have kind of the same building blocks, but it's it's more so kind of in how they're arranged to tell the story. And I thought that, like I said, kind of the, the introduction to the book, uh, for me at least, was more interesting um, then kind of the, you know, the, the story elements where he's going through, you know, kind of the beats of, of Star Wars. Um, and to that end, I think it probably is good. Like if you're in, you know, some sort of like classroom setting where you're learning about, you know, screenwriting, or, um, I think I told you kind of off air, I think it would be really like the story structure, the story palette thing would be really helpful if you were like a storyboard artist. Um, because what it really does is it really kind of distills your story down to the main action beats of the story. Yeah. Um, do you think there was a standout, like, when it comes to the summaries, like, of A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, do you think, like, any particular movie, like, kind of shines through the story palette? Um, not, not really necessarily, because of the way that it's, it's structured. It's really just you know, kind of going through these different, uh, you know, story sections here. So I just kind of flipped it open and uh, chapter seven is uh, finding Obi-Wan Kenobi and discovering the force. So really it's, it's literally just kind of talking, you know, kind of through that section, but it's, um, you know, kind of highlighting the different like, like action uh, pieces of that. So, you know, it says Luke finds and catches up to R2, but the sand people ambush and capture Luke, right? So it's it's really emphasizing kind of the action bits more on that, which is, you know, kind of why I think it would be really good if you were, if you're doing some sort of storyboarding thing, or if you're doing something um, like writing your own story or, um, you know, like a, like an audio drama or a narrative or something, because you really want to emphasize those, those action pieces. Cause that's, you know, kind of the, kind of the hook and that's, what's giving your characters, you know, kind of their own agency um, and things throughout the, the story. So to that end, I didn't really find, you know, any particular of the sections really more interesting than others. But what I did like is it kind of went through the title crawl for star Wars and, you know, kind of picked out those action words uh, there. And I thought that that was, you know, kind of, kind of interesting just to see it laid out in that way. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of a Western in a way, because uh, the story palette kind of separates like Star Wars. Uh, I mean, that's kind of how it is, like uh, very good guys, very bad guys, and the good guys rescue, escape, and fight. And then the bad guys search, capture, and destroy. Uh, kind of like in that uh, order. So like, it goes from like zero to ten. They're not going to start out at a ten usually. Right. Um, yeah, it, it did kind of get me wondering about like anti-hero characters, like if those exist, like in Star Wars movies. Like, uh, does this story palette kind of just work primarily for the original trilogy? Does it also work for the prequel trilogies? Would it work for uh, the sequels? Does it work for the TV shows? So. It does kind of get you thinking about different things. Yeah, it gets you thinking about some different things. And uh, one of the, the passages I liked um, as well, kind of in the in the first section, was that it's talking about how stories are really kind of dependent upon the actions of the characters. And, you know, like I mentioned, the book really kind of goes into highlighting the different actions of 
um, you know, Luke Skywalker and and Co. throughout the original trilogy. But it, it's it makes the um, it makes the argument for in a movie like Jaws, if you have you know Jaws the shark. Jaws is going around, you know, eating people all, all summer, and then it just stops all of a sudden, right? Then then what do you do with the story, right, from from that point? Because, you know, kind of the actions of the shark was what was driving your story. So if, if you know, if it stops doing that, then then where do you where do you go with the story, right? It has to have an, an interesting enough reason for it to have stopped, or the story kind of falls, falls apart. And I liked... Um, thinking about it like that and then that kind of got me thinking then about why people you know like or dislike uh, certain stories um you know we're talking about uh, star wars here but really you know it's kind of anything or any kind of you know franchise or things that you like and um it's really just kind of a, a kind of a disconnect on what you think a character would do and that's that's kind of the tricky part about you know writing for characters because you know cassia you could watch something and you know, see a character and analyze the character and understand their motivations differently than I would or than our listeners would or, you know, than anyone else would or, you know, the person writing that character would. So that's why I think sometimes, you know, if people have a really kind of strong, you know, uh, opinion or a, a strong feeling about why they think, you know, a character did something out of out of character for them, it was really just kind of in the way that they interpreted it. But, you know, that that passage there just talking about you know jaws the shark if jaws the shark stops stops eating people then obviously you know kind of you know as at large the viewing audience would be like well that doesn't make any sense why would just you know suddenly stop doing that so i thought that that was kind of interesting and you know kind of applying you know kind of that more broader or more broadly like accepted thing uh you know that that would make sense in a story and and kind of distilling it down to more specific instances i thought that that was kind of um an interesting way to think about stories and characters and you know motivations and things like that yeah and i mean they kind of like this is kind of addressed later in the book but kind of like when i was reading it i was like this it, it kind of feels like a bit like a dice roll thing it's like the the char- the cast of characters are on a quest kind of like dungeons and dragons or it's kind of mm, like mm-hmm. it's kind of like the the good guys kind of paint with like blue hues or something and like the bad guys paint with kind of like reds you know uh, right. so mm-hmm. it kind of seems like paint by numbers and even when i was reading this i was like this could be a pretty good video essay like but i think it just became a book yeah, it seemed like it was it was written more, um, like I said, for some sort of like academic setting or to you know be a, like a writing mm-hmm. aid kind of a thing. But um, but you make a good point about it uh, being kind of structured almost like a like a Dungeons and Dragons or like a role playing uh, game kind of thing, right? You know, your <laughs> dexterity plus one uh, kind of thing here in the in the story, and it, it you know kind of even uh, talks about it a little bit um, in that way. So here's a little passage here from kind of the intro section. It says, let's get to the story palette already for the Star Wars. The story palette splits between the good guys and the bad guys. It says the good guys rescue, escape and fight and the bad guys search, capture and destroy uh, kind of in that order. So um, that's kind of breaking down you know, kind of the kind of the motivations for you know the two sides of our characters, right? So you have Luke Han and Leia who are um, you know trying to rescue and who are trying to you know flee and to and to fight, and you have you know Darth Vader and the Empire who are you know searching out those characters and trying to destroy them and you know destroy planets and things like that. So um, it's kind of interesting to to distill down you know the story into such kind of basic framework, I guess in a sense, and maybe that was one of the reasons why it was a little bit more difficult to read maybe maybe reading the star wars uh story uh palette the structure of star wars is easier to do if you're not as familiar with the story of star wars yeah and i guess to make credit or or discredit i am very familiar with you know the story of star wars um and maybe it's just kind of like the most familiar of all the star wars like If this was the sequel trilogy, maybe I would be more receptive to it, or even, like, the prequel trilogy. Um, But it's kind of just, like, the one that kind of has the most writing about it. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think, like, 
maybe it's just because my own process is uh, inspired by Joseph Campbell and uh, Christopher Vogler, you know. Uh, so it's kind of like I, I kind of begin with the hero's journey or the writer's journey, and I try to um, kind of think, like, which role, like, which archetype the character will fill most of all and like pace it out like in like sometimes I just do like a writer's journey and a hero's journey to kind of just see where they match see where there's more depth you know and then kind of like list things out scene by scene but I the story palette does kind of get me thinking like maybe like kind of more heroic characters kind of have patterns that repeat themselves mm -hmm. and and the enemy characters kind of have patterns that repeat themselves but i don't know it's like kind of like when darth vader becomes good is he still like on the bad guy scale or is he on the good guy scale do you think yeah for sure that's a really good uh question um it would be interesting to see if you kind of took you know the story palette uh, formulation here and and plotted it out on some sort of uh, some sort of like a point chart or something like that and you could kind of see the way the story and the characters kind of ebb and flow throughout i think that that would be you know kind of a really interesting exercise um especially over you know the course of you know something like star wars that has you know several movies but you know kind of any of your other um big sort of ips that have you know a uh, lengthier storytelling to see how those characters kind of grow and how true to character i guess they stay then it would be almost like a like a grading <laughs> the character and the and the writer on how well they kind of kind of stick to um you know kind of the kind of the formula here i think that uh that that would be interesting to do and then yeah obviously it would be interesting to see how a character um you know like hannah and skywalker um especially you know kind of throughout the saga how they they go and you know they're more you know like the rebel alliance characters here in the original yeah. trilogy you know are are you know fighting and um you know trying trying to do good and you know be brave and all of those things and how that that changes and you know i'm just kind of kind of picturing this little like graph in my in my mind of like you know these these dots just kind of going up and down you know kind of like a like a wave as the character goes through these different uh story arcs yeah it is interesting and spoiler alert for future episode you said ebb and flow kind of like a, a song in a certain jedi survivor video game um uh, that's right, yeah. But kind of looking at uh, chapter 35, kind of like after all the other chapters, and, and the chapters are very, very brief. Um, it says, like, other elements of Star Wars, like the patterns. Um, Star Wars leans away from gore, horror, and explicit violence. And I'm like, yeah, that, that does kind of check out. Like, it's kind of more like... Uh, sci-fi fantasy fairy tale for the whole family you know um mm -hmm. and then chapter 36 like final thoughts on the original star wars trilogy um he he was kind of saying like uh kind of the way he saw star wars is like through the lens of like the palette because it's like repeating actions and choices and I'm like, for me, like, I, I mean, like, I think I, I've already kind of, like, uh, kind of conducted the orchestra for the heroes and writer's journey uh, already. Not just tooting the horn, but did, like, a whole movement and all that. But I don't know. It's interesting because it's, like, for me, like, I just kind of see, like, the hero's journey, like, as repeating actions and choices as well. But I guess, like, if you wanted to make a simplified, like, hero's journey, maybe this is, like, a simplified version of that, you know? Mm hmm Yeah, and to that end, I think it makes sense to cover, you know, not even necessarily the entirety of the original trilogy, but, you know, definitely A New Hope, which is, you know, about as straightforward of a hero's journey um, story as you could get. I think that plotting you know the story palette out over something that's you know highly nuanced like uh 
like the television series Breaking Bad would be really, really difficult uh, to do. You would see, you know, the characters be all over the place or, you know, Game of Thrones or something like that. So, um, you know, where they would be, you know, uh, just just kind of all over the place in, in terms of that. But when you look at, you know, A New Hope, you see, you know, Luke Skywalker, who's, you know, only doing, you know, things in the in the name of, you know, doing good and can kind of, you know, not... <laughs> I hate to say like pigeonhole, but you know, like literally, you know, just kind of a, a very narrow focus for what the characters are trying to achieve here. Um, and you know, a, a pretty straightforward hero's journey, uh, story as opposed to something that gets, you know, a little bit more, um, complex, you know, even within the world of star Wars. So. Yeah. I guess because you're a veteran of having read this book, um, did you think like the story <laughs> palette for Luke, like even if it, since his character uh, kind of matures and grows and I don't know, like even though he's always a good person, like he kind of plays like more like in the grays, I think uh, as Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi go on, like do you think the story palette addresses that or did it kind of just kind of play it like good guy wears the good hat? Yeah, I think it. I think it's more of a of a good guy wears the good hat kind of a thing. Um, it does get a little bit um, interesting as you go into, um, you know, the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi because at that point, kind of the your team of heroes is is starting to break up a little bit. Um, they're not necessarily always together, right? We never see um, in A New Hope. You see, you know, Luke and Obi Wan, and then you see. Han and Luke and Obi-Wan and Chewie and Han and Luke and Obi-Wan and Princess Leia and, you know, uh, Han and Chewie and Luke and Obi-Wan. They're never separate right after they meet each other. They're always together. So um, it does a it's it's a little bit more interesting, I guess, from that standpoint, then, as you get into Empire Strikes Back and things and you're seeing the the characters and their actions, you know, kind of independent of one another. Um, I think is a little bit bit interesting, but it does, you know, pretty much portray uh, Luke throughout, you know, as kind of the as kind of this uh, do good uh, hero of the story, and I I think ultimately kind of within, you know, just the films themselves, that really is you know kind of Luke's character arc uh, throughout, and then obviously you know that that character uh, journey goes you know before. Uh, you know a new hope and you know it goes after return of the jedi but yeah throughout the the first three yeah you see he's, uh, he's wearing the hat of do gooderies i think yeah it would be interesting if like uh, the characters and stories evolved over like a trilogy it's like in the in the first iteration you get like a 12 pack you know crayon box and then for you know, the second iteration, like Empire Strikes Back, you get like maybe like 36. And then for Return of the Jedi, you get 72 crayons, you know, like mm -hmm. that would be cool. I don't know. I, I feel guilty. Usually I finish books, so <laughs> I I feel like I failed, but it, um, it, it's OK. Yeah. There's no failures in reading, uh, just uh, reading as a journey. Um, and yeah, I think it's okay because, because really, you know, the bulk of the book here, we'll kind of, kind of wrap up here. I think, um, you know, the, the bulk of the book is really just kind of going through the story of Star Wars and applying this color palette principle, uh, to it. And like I said, that's, that's probably interesting or it's more interesting if you are doing some sort of creative writing, uh, class or exercise or you're, you know, writing a, a script or something like, like that, um, so so really in terms of it being like a, a star wars book it's it's not you know that i don't, don't want to say it's not that interesting but you know it's it, there's not much there for uh to to gleam from star wars beyond kind of the principles of this of this color palette um, but i do think it's interesting because now that i have read it um i i do think that i'm going to start analyzing characters a little bit more kind of in this way um yeah you know in the in the way you know you and I talk about them and, you know, the way that uh, they're they're being written. If I were to ever write a character, even, you know, if I'm watching other uh, shows or movies or things like that, be like, oh, okay, um, you know, and kind of place out the motivations for uh, characters a little bit more. So I think from like a thought exercise perspective, the color palette um, is really interesting and uh, really, you know, well done and kind of the, the way that... Uh, Daniel M. Blair structured this color palette is is really interesting. Um, I also love that it is called Book Four. Um, 
as you mentioned, Cassie, I, I believe that yeah. this is the first and, and only book. And uh, I'm assuming it's four. called book four because it's for episode four for Star Wars. And I think that that's amazing. So uh, yeah. good job uh, to, to Daniel uh, and Blair there for sure. But uh, yeah, this was this was a it was a it was a quick, easy read um, unless uh, unless you're Cassia, I guess. Um, but if you're in the world of you know, creative writing or uh, script writing or just want to analyze characters a uh, little bit differently or take a new approach to it. I, I think that this is a good and easy read and it's not very expensive. You can pick it up kind of um, any of your bookstores or I think you can even like get it. Uh, I think it, they have like a free version of it on Kindle and stuff like that. So, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And I'm glad you brought up book four even though it's the first book because I thought that was funny and it, it was funny because at the very end it's like chapter 37 thoughts on the story palette in Star Wars and it's like what caused you know the story palette more than anything and it's like the trash monster the Dianaga <laughs> created the story palette for that galaxy far far away and it's like wow like <laughs> That's deep. That's right. Yeah, see, it wasn't the Wills all along. It was the Dianaga in the trash compactor. Yeah, so I guess uh, may the trash monster be with you. Always. The Old Republic podcast can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, as well as everywhere else that Anchor Podcasts are distributed. Subscriptions, reviews, and shares help us out. And if you want to connect with the podcast on Twitter, we can be found at Old Republic Pod. And if you want to connect with me, I can be found on Instagram at Astro underscore Droid underscore. You can find us on Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash Old Republic Podcast. Our intro and outro themes were composed by Dennis S. Mowers at dennissmowersmusic.com. This episode of the Old Republic Podcast has been brought to you by Nikki Dog from Patreon. May the Force be with you. We will be back soon. Bye for now. <laughs>